Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Bea Jimenez and I'm the Director of Economic Opportunity at the Greater Boston Chamber of Commerce. On behalf of the Chamber, we hope you are joining us today feeling safe and healthy. Thank you for joining us for Doing Business with Boston's Children's Hospital, a new Paysetters event series launched in March. The Doing Business series brings transparency to corporate procurement procedures to provide real opportunity to black and brown businesses. We began by making the business case for inclusion. We developed the Paysetters program in 2018 as an effort to help support increasing access to business contracts for black and brown businesses in our region and leveraging our corporate business membership to step up their efforts on supplier diversity. Just like access to financial capital, is often out of reach for black and brown entrepreneurs, access to business contracts for businesses of color offers another opportunity to help scale our economy and help close the racial wealth gap. Through our Paysetters program, we identified that procurement can be an equity tool and that companies can use their buying power to make a difference across the region and in communities of color. Now more than ever, the business community needs to make procurement and contracts with businesses of color a priority. I wanna share a few notes before we begin the program. Thank you to the sponsors of our economic opportunity work, John Hancock and Eastern Bank. We are extremely appreciative of our continued partnership with these remarkable corporate citizens. I want to also flag that this webinar is being recorded and will be shared on our Chamber's YouTube page shortly after today's presentation. Finally, throughout the event, please be sure to submit your questions throughout the webinar using the Q&A or by emailing questions to chamberprograms at bostonchamber.com. Now I'm pleased to introduce today's speakers. David Walsh, is a Director of Supply Chain Administration at Boston Children's Hospital. With 30 years of experience and expertise in the healthcare industry, David is responsible for managing the purchasing, contracting, and business systems for supply chain. Throughout his career, David has strategically led a number of signature programs in procurement, energy, technology enhancements, and supply cost reduction. He has consolidated, integrated, and redirected various hospital facilities management and inventory systems, as well as redirected support services towards higher level day-to-day -day operation and efficiency. He is the recipient of a number of awards and recognitions for professional excellence. Welcome, David. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Next, we are joined by Jerry Epps. Jerry is the Supplier Diversity Program Manager at Boston's Children's Hospital with over 30 years of experience and expertise in supply chain. Jerry is responsible for managing the Supplier Diversity Program and has been in this role since September 2018, although he is a longtime employee of Boston's Children's Hospital, holding several different positions throughout his career. Gary is also the hospital's capital equipment buyer and manages the GHX VendorMate program, which we will learn about during today's event. Thank you for joining us, Jerry. And now I'll turn it over to David and Jerry for the program. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here and to have uh, an opportunity to discuss with folks how to do business at Boston Children's. And I think one of the keys here as we start is to, yes, this is how to do business with Boston Children's, but it's also an introduction into how to do business in the healthcare industry. I have found through my years of experience working with diverse vendors and minority vendors, that one of the challenges they have is access to healthcare and access to the audience and the right folks to talk to. Um, so I, I hope today we get an opportunity for a little education as to what it's like to, to work with a hospital. 
Um, everyone, so much how similar they are, they all have their little nuances and little differences. You know, I am proud to say that, you know, I've been here at Boston Children's for five years. And over that period of time, we started a diversity program. I come from the Connecticut area where we had a very robust um, diversity program. And, you know, one of the things I right off the bat is Mr. Epps, who has all these years of experience, um, was very interested in supplier diversity. And uh, so it was only a natural fit that as I started to work to develop this position within the department, and the interest really spiked at the hospital for diversity inclusion that, that Jerry would help fill this role. So Jerry, I'm glad that you're on board here with us. Thank you, Dave. I feel honored to be in this role here at Boston Children's Hospital as Supplier Diversity Program Manager. Um, since taking over this role, um, the program has grown over the last couple of years. Um, and also, um, I just like to say that I know many of you all that are out there. I've met you all at business opportunity events. And sometimes patience is a virtue and eventually um, those type of partnerships and agreements do come into place for every diverse supplier. Not every diverse suppliers, but the qualified ones that can maneuver through the healthcare industry. Well, I mean, just the opportunity to network and get together and get to know each other. I think is a critical, critical point. Um, and having somebody dedicated to the role is very, very important. But I also feel that here at Boston Children's, it's special for us because we have a great deal of support from the administration. Uh, they're behind this 100%. I, I don't think I've had pushback on anything we wanted to do in this field so far. So it's a pleasure to be doing this and if we can, if you want to bring up the first slide, we can start talking about, you know, what's it like to do business here? What are we based on? What are our thoughts? Um, and how do we approach this? We have a program here that we call ACE. Um, Jerry, you want to go over our mission statement first, and then I'll talk about the ACE program and a few other things? Yes. Um, our mission... Well, the program mission um, with and supporting the PACE that is. Boston Children's Hospital is fully committed in supporting the PACE setters program mission for the economic case for inclusion by increasing supplier diversity of spend across local, state, and national partnership with businesses of color. The hospital has partnership with Boston Ujima Project, um, holds memberships with CWE, which is WeBank, Center for Women with WeBank, um, the Greater New England Supplier Diversity Council. Also, I didn't put on this list, but I want to um, mention that we're also a member of the Healthcare Anchor Network, which is a national um, group that deals with um, anchor institutions supporting um, their local business, I mean, their local community. And also, uh, GPO Premier, which is a group purchasing organization. I sit on that supplier diversity committee for our GPO, and, I'm, and I feel very honored that back in June, they nominated me to be on that committee. So that, that's, a, that's a good point. So we try to have a uh, pause into a little bit of everything, let's say. And, um, you know, Jerry is actually, Jerry, aren't you on a committee with WeBank or GNMA STC also? Well, yeah, I just recently sat on the committee for the, uh, for their conference and stuff, uh, for the, for GMA, I mean, for the, um, the council. Um, we just put on the, their yearly annual opportunity event for diverse suppliers. And then uh, with the GPO, I don't know how many folks know what this is, but it's a group purchasing organization. And many healthcare institutions, I'd say probably 90% of them, are involved in a GPO. So one of the things that we like to do, or I like to do, is to help where possible for businesses to get involved with GPOs. Because that is access. That gives you access to the healthcare facility. You're already in their portfolio. You already have an established contract, 
So the contracting process is a lot easier and smoother. Uh, in our particular GPO called Premier, and there's another one that we're tied with Yankee, uh, has a program called the SEEDS program, where they will take minority and diverse um, businesses and help them grow. They won't put them through the rigorous process of a nationwide competitive bid. It tends to be more regional or local. Uh, and, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But my purpose here in this mission to show you is that one of the things I learned many years ago working with diverse suppliers was who's out there? What can they do? There's not enough out there. They can't service us. I've, I had, we had to go find them. Um, so these avenues and these opportunities out there help us meet each other. Uh, when I first went to my first big meeting in Connecticut, I chaired the diversity committee at the Connecticut Hospital Association. When I was there, they had a list of like eight or 10 vendors and they were either just a, a janitor, no, not only just, but they were janitorial or office supplies. And I said, we got to find more. There's got to be more out there. So, uh, so we did that. So bringing that here and working with Jerry, right away, we put our hands out in, into all sorts of buckets here so that we can get to know who's out there, what's out there, what do they need for support, et cetera. So it's all about getting involved and asking questions, meeting each other, talking to each other, and learning about each other. So if we wanna to go to the next slide, we, we, our program here we call ACE. Uh, actively for activity, commitment, and educate. I said earlier, education was a very, very important component. We spend time, and I'll let Jerry talk about a few of these things, assisting suppliers to learn about us, to learn about healthcare, to learn about other needs. That's our commitment. We wanna increase the opportunities for suppliers. We're gonna work with you it's not all about what we buy from you or what services we get from you. It's where can we also introduce you? Where can we help you even outside of our four walls? So Jerry has taken it upon himself uh, to work with companies to help get them certified. We try to, if I don't know if, it, if there's not an opportunity here at Children's, I might say, oh, I know my buddies at uh, Partners Healthcare are looking for somebody in this area. Or my somebody at Boston Medical Center is looking for this, or, you know, et cetera. Because we, we also network ourselves as, you know, directors and managers, et cetera. So our supply chains share information with each other. So we're always keeping our eyes open for where there are potential opportunities. Because of that commitment, um, I've had many experiences where I've introduced vendors to other hospitals. They've had opportunities but it was two years before I actually needed something. So Jerry, you wanna talk a little bit about how you help suppliers, you know, get certified, look for opportunities, uh, and how we kind of chalk it all up to see what can we do. Sure, why not? Um, that, that is like the funnest part of my job. Um, and one of the good things about me is I like helping companies succeed. Uh, companies of color, um, women-owned businesses, um, veteran-owned businesses, and I'm at a lot of business opportunity events, and we have a lot of person-to-person -person contact, and one of those ways that I help suppliers, even if they're not certified, is that that opportunity may be here at Children's Hospital where you don't have to have a contract. We can do business with you, but in the long run, we would like to see if we can provide a contract to suppliers. One of the things is like Dave talked about with the education part, uh, knowing that some suppliers don't think that being certified does any add, add any value to them. Well, being certified adds a lot of value to you. It opens up a lot of doors. Um, this um, healthcare world is a close-knit community. Dave um, mentioned Partners Healthcare, which is now called Mass General Brigham. Um, Ingrid and I, are, we, we connect. She's like a mentor to me. 
um, Archie Taylor and him over at Boston Medical Center. Um, I'm like a mentor to him. And with everyone is just committed to increasing opportunity for diverse suppliers. And it's like, we can bring you in, but a lot of suppliers want the microwave version of this instead of bacon in the oven. But it's like if you try to cook a steak in the oven, how tough it would be. If you bake it in the oven for a while, it's a little tender and stuff. And I just say, just be open. Um, my goal is, is to help everyone as much as possible. Um, I'm willing to meet people um, virtually since COVID-19. Um, we can meet virtually, just send me an email. Um, we can discuss ways of how to like make an opportunity for you and stuff. But my goal is, is to like just help everyone. And that's why we have at the end of um, this ACE Supplier Diversity Program, we have supplier diversity in real time. And that real time, that word time means things I must earn. So in other words, good things come to those who hustle and, and really want to have do business, not only with Boston Children's Hospital, but also other businesses within the pay setters program. So just to, t to tell you, you know, besides just doing business with each other, because we have really grown our portfolio here at Children's quite a bit, i just give you a, one or two examples. Uh, we had a company, somebody I was talking with um, and dealing with on a partic one particular product, which was kind of their specialty, and it didn't really fit in here that well at, at the hospital. But we gave them some advice on a few things, and we're actually going into a big pilot with them uh, next week. And going through that process, they learned more about us, I learned more about them, and Everybody is familiar with COVID, I'm sure, right? And it's been a it's been a struggle in the healthcare industry to get appropriate PPE. Well, through conversations with this particular individual, she said to me, she goes, I have I know people who make this stuff. I said, but that's not what you we're not here for that. And she says, Yeah, but I think I might be able to help you here. Well, we kept talking, we worked on standards, I explained to her you know, the different levels of protection, I, a lot of education into products, what we're looking for, certifications, et cetera. She produced some products. She got them here. She actually bailed us out and got us product when some of the big box players couldn't get us product. She was able to turn things around very quickly. Out of that, I, I also then helped her navigate the healthcare industry in distribution so now she has some major contracts with Cardinal Healthcare doing distribution down in New Jersey to a bunch of hospitals uh, and, and a couple of other vendors. So now she's developed a whole product line, a road that she wasn't even going down, but she had the capabilities with a little bit of education and she, and she hustled and got it done. We've done other things to, talk, you know, to help people expand their business and let them learn more about what our customer needs are. And one of them, I'm going to steal it away from Jerry, and I'll just tell you, is Westnet. They're, they're a wonderful company here. Gordon um, spent a lot of time talking to me about things, but there was never a really good fit. But here, with our research community, we figured out how do we better service this community, and it was actually through a desktop delivery. So he actually starts delivering right to the desktop of people instead of leaving it at the dock. He's also been very helpful in helping us acquire other products that have been very scarce during this epidemic. Uh, so we try to really partner and build things with our suppliers. Um, I also find that that relationships are very important in healthcare. We have to have a very good relationship. You have to understand us. We have to understand you. Uh, and I'll call them the big box, but all the big boys out there, their interest, they don't have as much interest than us as you potentially could, to tell you the truth. And I love competition. I think children loves competition. We love the opportunity. We'll work with you. We'll help you. We want to help grow you. Uh, we were actually planning this year to have a diversity fair. We wanted to have it in October. We were talking about it last year. 
uh, where I come from, we used to have a diversity fair where department heads would all come to this. We'd do some education sessions and it'd be kind of like a round table where you could go around and talk to all the department heads because access is critical and important. Uh, you have to be able to get to the folks and talk to them and, and, and be in an environment where everybody's comfortable. We had good times. Unfortunately, we couldn't do that with COVID. But with that, Jerry, we want to go to the next slide and talk about, I believe that's the application when that's out there so that we can get to know you. Even if there's nothing to offer us right now, if we want to have a, well, I would say sit down and talk, but a Zoom meeting at this point in time to talk about business and interests and opportunities, this is out there. So Jerry, why don't you tell them about this and what you do with this information? Yeah, absolutely. Um, like I said, um, the goal here is, is to provide that opportunity. Um, either it may be today or it may be months away, but we ask for you to fill out this application and we, and we hold on to it on file. Um, normally in a perfect world, um, like I said, I would normally be meeting with the suppliers person to person. Um, if it's, we may have met at an opportunity event or just in passing over the years and stuff like that. But this is the application right here to start the process for you to become a supplier at Boston Children's Hospital. It's not going to happen. Sometimes it doesn't happen right away and sometimes it does. I just want to circle back to what Dave was like talking about um, non-traditional suppliers um, providing PPE supplies to the hospital and stuff. That particular supplier that was able to help us, now she is um, getting certified to be a women business enterprise. And that, that was through Boston Children's Hospital guiding her there. Um, going back to Westnet, I know that Gordon is on this um, call today and stuff. That relationship, Gordon and I go back to the 90s and stuff. And I remember at one time, he could not do business with Boston Children's Hospital. And like he said to me this morning, he was a pit bull. And, you know, he just kept coming and coming and coming. And then when Dave Walsh started the supply diversity program here at Boston Children's Hospital, um, Gordon's business has grown here. And WestNet is a pillar in the Boston area community and the business world. And I really appreciate everything that they have done for Boston Children's Hospital. And, and with this, this, this application, uh, it's not like a job application or anything like that. It's our tickle of file. It's our file because when something comes up, usually one of my first steps is, Jerry, do we have a vendor who does this? Do we have a diverse vendor? Or Jerry says, hey, I think there's an opportunity here or there. But this is a good way also to kick off an introduction um, for us to get to know you. And it's, I don't want to call it a mentorship program, but in many ways, we help to mentor the vendors, uh, to give them guidance. It's nothing formal, but we do share a lot of information. You're going to get the truth. We're going to tell you where the roadblocks are. We're going to tell you where the struggles are. But at the same time, we'll help you navigate those. And through our relationships with a lot of these major suppliers and vendors, I have situations where you can't supply us because of our distribution model, but you can supply the larger vendor that we're going to buy it from. So there's all different avenues. It's a very intricate system. So we, we're more than happy to help you navigate it. And like I said, I've been around in this system for more than 30 years. Jerry's over 30 years doing this stuff. Uh, I'd like to think I know where a lot of these tributaries go and a lot of directions, these river flows. And uh, we have good relationships with some of our larger vendors. And, and they also are under pressure to do good work with minority suppliers because uh, it counts towards their spend and our spend. So they like it when we make that marriage. And we're very happy and very proud when we were able to do that. So and it's something that we do, and we do it on a regular basis. 
Um, hey Dave, I just want to say to the to the suppliers out there, um, being a part of the pay setters program is a good way to uh, get your business note notice. Um, I have the list right here of suppliers that are part of the pay setters, and when I first took a look at this list, I said, "Oh, we were doing business with the with a lot of these vendors on here," and I have a lot of contact with a lot of the suppliers on here before Boston Children's Hospital joined the pay setters. Uh, we just joined the pay setters in what, January of this year, 2020. So we've actively have already been doing business with a lot of the suppliers on their list. Yeah, and, and one of the good things with pay setters is the locality here and the tightness of all the hospitals and facilities around here. And when we talk about more regional things, there is a regional GPO that we work with, Yankee. Uh, so there's a lot that, uh, that can be done. So for the sake of time, what I'd like to do is get into the next slide so you see what you have to deal with. So we have a website, www.childrens.org. You click on to About Us at the bottom of the page. You go to the Supplier Diversity Program, and in there for your review, you'll see these different policies. Code of Conduct, Compliance, Confidentiality, Purchasing, purchasing Solicitation, and our Vendor Policy, and Terms and Conditions. You might want to go and take a look at these. These are our policies that are in place. Most hospitals, well, I would say all hospitals, have these. They need them from a legal perspective to be in compliance with the Office of the Inspector General. So they, they're gonna be a little different from place to place, but in essence, they're all the same and many similarities. So you might wanna glance over some of those, take a look at it, see what's it mean to you. And actually, it might be good to do before your first meeting with us, because if you do have questions about them, we can help you understand them. So for example, one, our purchasing policy about how do we bring products in here with purchase orders, et cetera, things like that. Uh, our vendor policy, it's, it's all in there. And you'll see that one of the things we require for a vendor that we do business with is we have to have what we call an OIG check, Office of Inspector General, to make sure there's never been any Medicare, Medicaid fraud or anything like that. So there are, and there's also criminal background checks, et cetera. So we have to do all those checks before we can do business with you. Uh, and then we have, I think Jerry mentioned GHX, I was doing the introduction. Uh, we have a vendor portal where you would need to register. And that's where we do our, um, our background checks. But we're not gonna make you go through all that until we're really ready to do business with you, because. I think it costs 25 or $50 to do. Um, we'll do our separate background checks, et cetera, to make sure things are cool and we can move forward with you. And when it comes time, we'll tell you to register and vend mate, and that's when you would need to do that. And the reason we do that is because they constantly do the checks. So for our regulatory purposes, you know, I think it's on a daily basis, it actually cycles through and checks these businesses for fraud and abuse. So that satisfies our auditors. It also indicates that you'll have to read our code of conduct, our compliance, and you're going to have to check them on. And another thing that's also very important, working in the healthcare environment, if you're going to be in the hospital around patients or around people, or around staff, hospitals will require you, in most cases, you have to have a flu shot. You have to have a, hepatite, a, a TB test, TB et cetera, test. things like that. So all that documentation gets loaded up in the system. That way we protect ourselves, our patients, our staff, and yourself. So a lot of, a lot of the formalities happen with these policies and with signing into the system. So Jerry, you want to talk a little bit about GHX and uh, Vendimate and that process? Absolutely. And um, the cost of that, it's a three tier cost. Um, and it depends on how much business that you're doing with the hospital. Um, the lowest tier cost on that is $35. And if you're middle tier, as far as what our spend is with you, it's like $145. And if you're 
over a hundred thousand, it's like about four hundred dollars um, to become a member of that. Um, Dave talked about not only that does it does the quarry checks and stuff. There's a, some other health things that you need to have filled out. Um, the main thing about that it's about the patient safety and our employee safety. That's why we have this program. Um, because the world is kind of crazy these days. And Dave's foreseen this a few years ago and had Vendamate come into the hospital and I've been managing that program. And I think it's very successful. And it also lets the departments grade you. So if you have a driver or employee here in the hospital and they're having a bad day, they can go in there and they can rate your employee. And then we no normally notify the company that, hey, you got a bad employee, we can't have them on site. And that has, ha has happened where security had to reach out to Dave and then Dave had to reach out to me where we had to talk to a supplier about a specific employee. So it's all about safety. Uh, I figured that the cost should be nothing, should, it that shouldn't even matter to you. I mean, I have companies. You know, remember, Jerry, we also work with vendors also with, with the cost. We also, I've also worked out things with VendorMate that, you know, if you're not really coming on site and you're supplying a product, it's the basic $35 fee, regardless of, you know, how much business you're doing with us. You know, do you need the shot? If you're in a research area, you have to do like the research safety check, you know, a few things like that. So, but that's stuff we can cover with you when we introduce, have an introduction and sit down and talk to you. Because, you know, don't let that, that scare you away. Uh, if you're gonna do, in any hospital in Boston, I think 90% of them have vendor made and only one has rep tracks. And if you signed up at one hospital, you can just add the other hospital, it's not an additional cost. So if you end up working in four hospitals, you pay that fee one time. Um, so that's it's just a compliance thing. It shouldn't be a deterrent for anybody. Uh, like I said, I'm, we're more interested in developing opportunities, developing the vendors, and educating. The biggest thing is education for you and education for us and maintaining that relationship. I've had vendors over the years you know, we we sit down and talk every month or every quarter, even though nothing was going on. They would come in and sit down and chat for a half an hour, and yeah, and that just keeps it fresh in our mind. And there's a big difference between sitting down and having a conversation for a half an hour once a month or once every two months, than calling me every week and bugging me. Because if you call me every week and bug me, I'm gonna say, well, that's a pain in the butt. I really want to move on uh, because trust me, if we've got that relationship, we actively seek diverse suppliers. So it's important, fill out that application, let us get to know you, let's get time to sit and talk, let's get you in our portfolio. I know that for example, I know we have an, an RFP coming up pretty soon for cleaning services, on two Brookline Place that's opening up. I know we're gonna have another opportunity happening out in Waltham pretty soon, as we're gonna be doing some new construction out there. And off the top of my head, I can't think of any others right now. Uh, but we're looking for a manufacturer, somebody who makes disposable scrubs. It's a crunch in the market right now. We're trying to do that. So go to the website, fill out the application, Bug Jerry, let him screen you, and let's see where it takes us. And Dave, one of the questions was, is do we have a mentor pro, uh, mentorship program uh, for MBEs? Uh, we mentor. That's, that's the part of the education process. Yeah. We don't have an official program, but I would consider what we do mentoring of MBEs, yeah. So... With that, I guess I'll turn it over for any questions and stuff. Thank you so much, David and Jerry. And both of you make such a great team. I can see why you both work together. <laughs> so <laughs> let's get to some audience questions. Um, one of them is around 
um, mentorship, which Jerry, I think you just touched on. Yes. Can you expand a little bit more in what ways does the Boston Children's Hospital team find ways to support businesses of color in the area? Absolutely, no, no problem there. Um, I, I just, the, the communication line is open, you know, between the supplier and myself. Um, also, if Dave mentioned this earlier, if we can't use you right now, we look at other ways to help you. Sometimes it's not as a tier one doing direct business through Boston Children's Hospital. It could be tier two. You could be working with a supplier that we know and, and develop a relationship like that. And that's something that a lot of businesses of color that don't know about is that you can still do business with Boston Children's Hospital. Um, let's take construction services. If you're a construction company and we know that they have to have a percentage of minority um, suppliers and we had a discussion not too long ago with our real estate department and facilities lawyer about this, um, you can work with a big real estate um, construction company, say like a suffix or turn a construction. You can be on a hospital project working with them and they would have to report their spend that you're, with the work that you're doing with them with this construction company. That's what we call tier two. But remember, during that process, we have to make sure the vendor is a qualified vendor. Absolutely. And, absolutely. and so that's one of the things we do. We try to pre-qualify folks. Jerry, you didn't talk on your favorite, is one of the things we do is we try, we can't do it now, but we were having a vendor diversity day. Yeah. So we would take vendors in here. And if my, I don't know, if I was a courier service company, uh, people who use a courier, we'd get them to come to the meeting and we'd introduce the company to the users and stuff like that. So we try to make some face-to-face -face introductions. Uh, and that's how we try to stay active. And I gotta tell you, one of the other things is children's is very active out in the community. Uh, and active in our professional organizations. And people know we're active. So many, many times we'll get a phone call. Dave, Jerry, do you know where I can get somebody who does this? Do you know a vendor who does that? Uh, because it also tends to be that the smaller diverse suppliers have a lot more flexibility and they're willing to make adjustments to meet the, the different needs people have. So. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things Jerry and I, well, we both love to do that part. Um, it's like putting Legos together. But, you know, it's good to go out there and have people reach out to you because every once in a while when you need help or something, we know where to go and, and to ask. Uh, but I would say probably nine to one, we get asked versus us having to go ask. And I'm going to tell understand? you that you this is always on our mind. <laughs> and the first thing that pops in, yeah, I think I might know somebody. Let's make an introduction. And I just circle back on that supplier diversity day um, because um, I can say that we have fresh food generation and we had sweet teas come in here and do a presentation um, for their catering services to a bunch of, of our stakeholders and stuff. And a couple of months later, we got a Huffington Post mentioned by um, Fresh food, yeah. <laughs> Cassandra and her group, they gave us a reference. And um, I, I, I felt very honored by that, you know. And, and now we do a nice sum of business with Fresh Food Generation. And when I talk about that tier two stuff, uh, Fresh Food Generation, Sweet Teas and Fresh Food Generation has a partnership where Fresh Food Generation sells some of the bakery items, the cupcakes, the cookies that Sweet Teas make. So sometimes those type of partnerships, they work and stuff. Sometimes suppliers have to come together um, to make each other successful. Thank you so much for sharing that, Jerry and David. So a few more questions coming in from our audience. Thank you so much for submitting questions today. So I have a question from Tariana Little. She's with Envision Productions and she wants to know, how do we register as a vendor? Jerry, is that application right online? Yeah, the application's online, but um, also you can uh, reach out to me personally and I will send you the link on how to um, get to that application.
Great, happy to hear that. Following question, this is coming from Renee. Hi, Renee. How many diverse suppliers are you currently working with, is her question. Well, Joe, you just ran that report, didn't you? We have, we have over 90, um, not just local. We have 90 local, regionally, and nationally that we're working with. And not just business of colors, but all um, diversity attributes. Great, and this seems like a follow-up question in knowing where do you see the largest areas of spending at the hospital currently? Dave, I know you mentioned PPE seemed to be a prominent area. Right now, I would say PPE is one of the biggest areas yes. uh, because of the pandemic and the cost and the volumes. Prior to that, I would say it was probably more in you know, secondary source like new construction would be a big one and services. Hardware. What's that? Computer hardware. Yeah, Work computer from hardware. Home. Yeah. It's kind of all over the board. We don't see it. You know, we can't really count if there are pacemakers out there because, you know, I don't see too many diverse suppliers manufacturing pacemakers. But when we look at more of the commodity type products and services, et cetera, that's where we see it. And that's, I think that's the place where we've been trying to dig into the most to find more and more vendors. Uh, and we've had a lot of vendors explore different opportunities, some with success and some not with success. But it's, it's always worth the try because we always learn something from it. Thank you, Dave. Uh, sharing more, this is coming from Rose. Hi, Rose, thank you for your question. We're, we are an event production company who sets up conferences, concerts, meetings, and fundraisers. Do you outsource for events and have you pivoted to virtual as of lately? We've done some virtual, like we did the virtual walk, right, Jerry? Um, we did the virtual walk. Yep. When that came through the CH Trust. Uh, so we do didn't come through supply. Yeah, we do. Um, we do outsource events when we have them. It's kind of been slow, but uh, and that comes to what foundation, Jerry, mostly setting up the events. CH Trust. CH Trust. Uh, so DJ DJ, that's my son's name, <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> Jerry works closely with the trust and has a very good relationship. So if there are vendors out there who do this, which I'm assuming there is with the question, then I'd suggest, you know, get to know Jerry and um, put an application in so we can make some introductions. Absolutely. And we will reshare David and Jerry's information before we close the program to make sure that anyone listening can grab their contact information and if there's any follow-ups. Uh, another question is coming in, um, as of this year, where do you see services for the following year? And I guess this is a question re related to, you know, perhaps the downturn turn in the economy and um, assuming that 2021, um, the hospital might be spending less. Can I um, take this one, Dave? Well, you can try, see if you know what I am <laughs> um, I'm just gonna, based on our last fiscal year, um, because of COVID-19, I believe we were nine and a half percent down in our fiscal year 20. We were on our way to surpassing that, but we're nine and a half percent up down. That's in diversity spend. Diversity spend. That's yeah. diversity spend. The hospital as a whole, we're, we're not closing because of COVID. If anything, we're gonna be busier. Our services are still gonna be needed. Construction's still going on. I will tell you, I'll share that, you know, our operating budget hasn't changed. We're hoping some, for some help from the federal government, et cetera, things like that, just like any other facility is. But we have to still move business along. It may go at a slower pace. I don't really see any big drop off. I think I mentioned earlier, we're gonna be opening up to Brookline Place pretty soon. We're gonna be looking for some services out there. We're still on path with the Hale building here. We're gonna be looking for services there. So will we be downsizing office space? Probably because people are looking, working a little bit more remote. But all in all, from a services perspective, I, 
I expect it to, if it diminishes from the current route, it's going to go up in another way. What do I mean by that? We've had a lot of events over the years. We've only had two or three virtual events. My guess is if this keeps on, we're going to have a lot more virtual events. So we might lose here, but we might gain here. It's hard to say, but I think the overall picture still looks fairly good. Um, and actually, with it being a little bit slower, would allow us to have more time to work with vendors to develop plans on how to service, et cetera, and where the opportunities are. So you got to look at the silver lining in the cloud. David, you've mentioned the Brookline Place project. Can you give our audience more of an overview of what that project consists of and what they can expect? Um, I can tell you as much as I know right now because I just found out today. Uh, Brookline Place is under construction. It's going to be opening up in about, I think it was what, six months, Jerry, six or eight months. And it's a new offsite facility yep. with clinics, physician practices, et cetera, things like that. You know where the Brook House is? Uh, just before you get to Route 9, it's right there to the, to the left if you go down um, South Huntington Ave and go under the bridge. Okay, great. Good to know. So Dave and Jerry, both of you have extensive experience with supplier diversity and supply chain management. From your experience, where do you see some of the challenges for new vendors um, trying to do business either with the hospital or other industry, healthcare industry professionals? I see it as patience and a willingness to learn. Um, there's some, remember hospitals have been around for a long time, of course, but it's understanding how we do business. It's not like doing business down the street with you know, an insurance agency or whatever, we have certain need, demands and needs, and we don't do them just because we want to, we do them because we have to. And understanding the effort that has to go into it, and I'm gonna call it, for lack of a better term, cost of doing business, okay? So if, if, we're, if you're selling us scrubs, I'll make this up. If you wanna sell us scrubs, we're gonna want samples. So it's, it's probably going to cost you for the samples, but we're not going to buy, they don't buy samples. Uh, so be prepared for things like that. Um, I had a misunderstanding once with a young lady who brought some stuff in for a whole bunch of samples for departments to try. She did a whole fitting line. And then she said, I can't send these back. You have to buy them. I'm like, what? Uh, she didn't understand the process. Um, so I helped her out. I, I took care of it. I didn't want her to pay the price for it, but uh, I learned, she learned. So there is a little bit of a, a cost of doing business. Uh, so we just make sure that we're on the same page. But once again, patience. Conversations and patience. I agree. Jerry, would you like to add? I agree with two words he just said. Patience and, and conversation. Because it takes time. And going back to that, that word time, things I must earn. You know, you got to be willing to spend that time, you know. And going back to another thing I said earlier, don't expect a microwave oven um, solution. Let it bake in the oven. Let it become tender. Nurture that relationship with not only say me here at Boston Children's Hospital, but with other institutions as well and stuff. And, and continue to network. Um, Dave had mentioned this earlier too, as within the healthcare community, we all network with each other. We all know each other. And every other healthcare institution will call up and say, who are you using here that's a diverse supplier? Who are you using here? So. So Jerry, if you don't have a microwave, Jerry, you have an easy bake oven. I know you. <laughs> okay. I know how to cook, so that's the difference. <laughs> one, other thing, one other very, very important thing is a lot of times, once we get to know somebody, if we need something quickly, we'll ask. We'll call say, hey, can you do this? Absolutely. Don't tell us you can do something if you can't, because that will wreck your reputation. 
tell us what's a reality because it's a lot easier for us to deal with a reality than it is you trying to impress us. I'm much more impressed if I say, I need 10 of these. And you can say, I'll get them to you. And then you only give me five. If you tell me I can get you five and maybe five more next week, I'm a lot happier. So because I count on what you tell me. So make sure you have the credibility. Absolutely, with the credibility part, because like I said, the healthcare community, it's a close-knit community and stuff, and we all network with each other. And when, when another institution calls and asks for a reference, if you have a bad reference at Boston Children's Hospital, we're going to tell them the truth. Hey, this is what happened. It's up to you if you want to like try to develop that relationship with that supplier. But your reputation is a key. That's great to hear. David and Jerry, any closing thoughts for our program? No, I, I would just, I'd like to just tag on to something that Jerry just said there. Um, Jerry just mentioned your reputation. Things go bad, things go south sometimes. So honesty, if you've had a bad experience someplace, I've been around long enough, I know it's not always the vendor's fault. I know some of these places are hard to deal with. So if I hear something, I'm going to ask you about it. Just tell me what's going on. And we'll figure out how we can either fix it and give you another chance. Or I might sit there and be surprised and say, hey, I know, they're idiots. Let's work together. Okay? So just uh, open this honesty and conversation. Very helpful. And I hope we get to meet a lot of folks from this. And Bea, I just want to say this with the pay centers, this is good how, um, how to do business web series. I like this, but I also think that, um, you know, as us being anchor institutions and also the pay setters, we can also probably do like a business opportunity event for the suppliers that are a part of the pay setters program. And I just got through doing the engage and connect with the Federal Reserve. And that was like on Zoom and that went very well. Uh, Center for Women, we just had their conference that went very well. And for the Greater New England um, Supplier Diversity Council, we just had their, count, um, their um, opportunity event and that went very well. So I think that if the peace set is looking looking to like helping suppliers. This way you can bring these suppliers to all of the pay setters members on a one day or two day event. You're just giving me all these ideas. <laughs> well, thank we you have, so we much. Need diversity day. We need, like, Jerry, you were down with the one that we've had in Connecticut. Yes. We need um, another one of those really bad in this area. Yeah, and and Dave mentioned earlier we had a we were doing a supplier diversity day where I was bringing in their suppliers that are a part of your program that have come into Children's Hospital and have made presentations um, to our stakeholders, and there are suppliers that are on this list that have been um, a part of RFPs. There are suppliers on this list that we are contracted with, and we expanded that contract with that desktop delivery program last year. That's great to hear. Well, thank you so much, David and Jerry and the entire staff at the Boston Children's Hospital team for joining us today. We're at our time, but clearly we can continue this conversation. Thank you so much to our audience for listening in today and joining into our program. Thank you so much for the wonderful presentation and overview of your procurement process. Before we go, I want to highlight upcoming events. On November 18th, we will be joined by the procurement team at Eastern Bank for the next installment of our Doing Business series. Following this event, on December 3rd, we will be joined by the procurement team at John Hancock. You can register for these programs and more by visiting bostonchamber.com. Once again, thank you for joining us and please stay safe and healthy. Thank you. Thank you.